I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Uh, the entire season has been such a great celebration in GCI India. I thoroughly enjoyed and uh, uh, I, this is my prayer from the depths of my heart that God may shower all the blessings of Christmas upon each and every family who are joined here and who could not join and uh, may you celebrate and experience joy, peace, hope and love which is the gift was sent to us in the form of a person, a little baby, Jesus Christ. Having said that, I would like to appreciate our children for the wonderful rendition of carols and uh, also would like to uh, appreciate Mr. Rao. This time, uh, he this is cross-generational song, I can tell. <laughs> and uh, uh, everybody, all the members could participate and uh, sing along with him. It was such a beautiful presentation, Mr. Rao. Congratulations to you. And it is such a joy to see our beautiful Sarita here. And <laughs> I believe all of you must be missing her. And it's been almost... Uh, six or seven months and uh, we did not see Sarita and we are very happy. Definitely Christmas brought uh, joy to us with your presence also. And I also would like to uh, uh, say I'm very so happy to see David De Silva and uh, uh, Lydia after a long time. Thank you so very much for joining us. And uh, I could see Selena's friend also here. And thank you so very much for uh, joining us. And may this Christmas bring joy and happiness to all of you. And I forgot to wish uh, our members who are participating online and uh, watching, on you, watching on YouTube, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and blessings of Christmas to you and your family. Uh, yes, I can see uh, Zav uh, sorry, Clement's uh, Ani uh, sister Amla. And uh, I'm so sorry I forgot uh, uh, Morris. <laughs> Uh, we are very happy to see you and Kevin uh, here. Th thank you so very much for joining us and Merry Christmas to you also. Having said that, I would like to move into my sermon. Uh, today we wanted to keep the service as short as possible, but uh, uh, as usual, Pravin brings some long messages. <laughs> but I'll try my best to keep it as short as we can. The title of my message today is Christmas with its dynamos Christmas with its dynamos I know you might have heard so many messages about Christmas the moment I start you must be already knowing in your heart okay this is what Pravin is going to speak because he read from Luke chapter 2 so what else are there these are these are the points from Pravin has to speak from there only but I can tell you one thing for sure Though we speak from the same scripture, the word of God has such a power, it can transform our lives even through a dot, zot, or a comma. Amen? So, the power of God is so powerful, and I do believe uh, today you also will be ministered by the Holy Spirit as we are going to meditate the word of God. So, before I start the message, as usual, let me put a poll. Let me put uh, a quiz for you. Franklin used to organize quiz, and I'm following him little in a tech manner. Uh, so, uh, Roshan, please put the QR code on the screen. The question is, what comes to your mind when you, when the Christmas season start? What comes to your mind when the Christmas season start? At the same time, I would like to ask, uh, Roshan, can you please share the link I shared in the church WhatsApp group, fellowship group? <coughs> A link will be shared in the church fellowship group, otherwise you can scan the code on the screen. And there is a question, please, please all of you participate and share your answers. What comes to your mind when Christmas season starts? Roshan, did you share? Yeah. The link has been shared. In the church WhatsApp group, those who are not part of the group can scan this code. And if you cannot scan this code, at least open menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, menti.com, and enter the code 17626928. 
menti.com m e n t i menti menti.com code 172 17626928 okay so when you when the christmas season start this is what comes to your mind so oh, christ in our hearts love praise and worship caroling carol celebrations family family gatherings and cakes and treats wonderful somebody i appreciate i am also a foodie and uh, my wife did, did did not let me eat cake yesterday travel holidays wow cakes again uh, shopping wonderful and caroling joy family reunions love personified somebody very theological christ in our hearts and christ in our lives celebrations shopping sales very good <laughs> those are wonderful and celebrations and gifts yes we can never forget gifts christmas or is always about gifts <coughs> who believe in sorry who believe in christ son christmas is for people who believe in christ only okay wonderful very evangelical i appreciate it god's love for man and cakes and treats praise and worship love hope family union home carols star yes beautiful decorations we cannot forget jesus travel i really don't know who travels during christmas time <laughs> yeah steven steven <laughs> steven has to travel <laughs> peace family gifts and uh, oh keep your answers coming i appreciate it it's such a joy to see your answers change in my changing my heart wonderful and uh, anything new love gives peace yeah that is something we did budget <laughs> <laughs> that is really true i appreciate your genuine answer and uh, shopping scales cakes and treats okay among all uh, the high okay keep your answers coming i appreciate them okay among all love joy carols these are something they stood out long and i mean big and i can see the church focus uh, on these three aspects love joy carols at the same time there are so many other things you have reminded us and it's so beautiful yes when we think about christmas and christmas season all of these things come come into our mind if i just um segregate them into like uh, divide them into groups or uh, make them as groups what we call it uh, uh, yeah segregate segregate it they come under two categories number one it can be a festive marketing kind of thing or it can be a spiritualizing event a marketing festive kind of feel or spiritual kind of feel the messages we talked about those are wonderful they talk about festivities decorations family weather i don't know how we missed it weather is so wonderful right uh, weather parties christmas traditions um gifts thanksgiving charity cakes and all these things they come into our mind when we talk about christmas all these festivities these are beautiful but unfortunate thing is all these items of festivities marketing shopping things they mask the message of christmas the moment we think about christmas our minds goes on gifts our minds goes on um, celebrations decorations shoppings these are masking us we are not able to focus they are trying to take our attention away from the very message of christmas at the same time you have to forgive me for saying this at the same time people who talk so much about uh, i'm not talking about anyone personally christ in you no you should know christ uh, it is about jesus we are talking about but most of the times we, it is about do you have room in room for christ in your heart it's a good message 
I'm not against it, okay? It's a biblical message. We talk so much about you have room for Jesus in your heart. You have joy, peace, hope of Jesus in your heart. These are good. But sometimes over-spiritualizing these things will, uh, make a, will take away the power that is in the Christmas message. The Christmas message has a power. It has a power that changes our lives personally. And it has a message and power that can change the life of the world itself. The entire world can be changed by the Christmas message. And while focusing, by over-spiritualizing Christmas, sometimes we may lose the very power or the very dynamos. There is a Greek word, dynamic, dynamo, very power of the Christmas message. Kindly don't misunderstand. I'm not saying Christ in you, having hope, peace and joy are bad. They are good messages. They are the messages personally. Sometimes we Christians thinking about personal, personal Christmas message, we may forget, we may tend to neglect the global impact of the Christmas message. The good news of Christmas is not just for children and malls where they can have good marketing, good money. And at the same time, the good news is not just for the priest who can get extra uh, offerings and gifts. It is not just for them. It is for the entire world. It is not just for the people who just close their doors and prays in their closed rooms. But the Christmas message has to be preached to the entire world. It is for everyone. Have you ever thought we are going through a season of war in the going through the season of war now? Imagine you are one of the two thousand Christians who got stuck in Gaza. What is a Christmas to you? Or you went to Gaza. Either it can be to Christian brethren or for others. What Christmas message will you share? We are going through the season of war. Does your Christmas message make any sense to these people? Can we make Christmas appropriate for them? What do they think about it? Can we go and say Merry Christmas and give a plum cake? That's what I would like to focus today. I would like to talk about the global impact, the power the Christmas carries, the power the message of Christmas carries and which can be shared to anyone. That's what I would like to talk this morning because the Christmas message is not just for the people who are living in tranquil life the Christmas message is also for people who got stuck in war Christmas is not just for all of us who could go and afford money and pay gifts in uh, buy gifts and all in malls but it is also for the people who got stuck in the war who could not afford even a piece of bread and who were who were fighting for a piece of bread today it belongs to them also the christmas message is for the people who are under war it is for people who are under oppression and this is for people who are under suppression the moment we think about christmas we get we feel silent night holy night songs we feel so wonderful to feel that but when Jesus was born, that was not the situation. The night Jesus born was not so peaceful. The night Jesus was born was fully full of confusion. The Bethlehem was full of people who came to register their names in the census. And Mary and Joseph could not find even a room in a hotel. So they had to go to, you know what we call it, manger, right? They have to go to a place where the cattle is kept. They don't have a place. And do you really think that will be very simple and easy, uh, poor, easy place where they can register their names and come? They don't have the sophistication as we have today. That will be full of confusion and chaos. And moreover, they are under the oppression 
of the Roman rule. When while they are registering their names, they must be complaining against their government. These people are registering our names so that they can uh, they can uh, squeeze us and take more and more taxes from us. And if anybody asks, why should I register my name? Why should I pay more taxes? They will be killed. They are under suppression. They are under war. During the birth of Jesus, so many wars took place. So many people claimed themselves as messiahs and revolted against Romans. And in fact, Pontius Pilate was specially sent to uh, Israel, Judea especially, because there were so many riots were happening. Rome directly wants to handle these. They don't want to believe in Herod or anyone else. They want to handle it directly. That's why they said, we know this situation in the Red Sea now. That was the same situation there. Uh, Egypt and Asia could not be connected because the common point was Israel. There were continuous revolts were taking place. That's why Rome sent uh, governor <coughs> Pontius Pilate to handle that situation. So they are living in the very situation the people in the Middle East are living today. They are living in the very situation the people in the Ukraine are living today. So Christmas message is not just about silent night, holy night. It is a message for the people who are in war, for people who are oppressed, for people who are suppressed. And for them, the angel came and said, we are proclaiming the good news. And this, the, the angel is proclaiming the good news, the birth of a king. And this good news is not just as a personal message of joy, peace and hope. It is beyond it. It is not just a personal experience, it is the experience for the world. That is what the angel proclaiming. And with, uh, who understood the power of Christmas message? Can you, can you please guess who, and who is the first person understood the power of uh, Christmas message first? Shepherds? Listen to my question. Who understood the power of Christmas message first? <laughs> King Herod was the first person who understood the power of Christmas message. When the wise men came and said, the king was born for the Israelites or the Jews, Herod was the first person who got terrified. Why? He is not thinking about silent night, holy night, the baby is so small, why should I be worried? And I can celebrate with plum cakes and rum. No. He was the person who was so terrified and what he did, immediately... He killed so many children. He understood this baby is not just a baby. This baby is really a global king. <laughs> he understood the power of the gospel message, Christmas message. That's why he was frightened. Unfortunately, many a times we Christians could not relate to the power of that uh, um, Christmas message. We can see the same thing in Matthew chapter 2, where Herod was terrified and killed people. Why the birth of baby troubled the king Herod? Because the boy born is a king. You know, have you ever seen anyone born as a king? Nobody in the world who will be born as king. People in the world become kings. They'll be born as child, children. They'll become kings. But Jesus is the only person in the world who was born as king. In his birth itself, he is a king. In his birth itself, he already won the victory over the world. Amen. The Christmas is not about the birth of a cute and adorable boy and uh, shepherds and wise men visiting with their gifts and their cute camels. Nowadays, uh, some children, they want to go to church because they want to see the camels and the animals in the nativity play. <laughs> <coughs> especially in cities it is not about them the Christmas is about a king a baby, baby king who was not helpless though his birth itself terrified kings actually he, his birth was proclaimed by angels and first person understood was Herod having said that let us go and explore some truths about this baby king how and, and let us understand, try to, try to reason out and understand how this Christmas message is so powerful. Luke chapter 2, it starts with this. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. 
the census first took place while uh, Corinius was governor in Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. The first word it says, Caesar Augustus was the king. Caesar Augustus was the emperor of those days. Luke, he is writing about the rule of Caesar Augustus. Oh, at the same time, uh, this person's name is difficult to pronounce. Uh, his name is, uh, what is this person's name? Uh, Curinius. Okay, he's the governor. I'm not used to these difficult names. Okay, I'm easy, easy to Suresh Ramesh and all. <laughs> so, and Caesar Augustus was the emperor uh, in Rome, and this Quirinius was the one who is in charge of this Israel and this locality. And Luke, he is writing about the greatest people of those days, who was the greatest person in the first century. Caesar Augustus, there is no one above him. He is the king of the entire world of the known world. He was ruling everything. Everything is under him. And Luke, as he was mentioning the names of Caesar, Augustus, and Quirinius, he, he gives a great start to his story. And what happens, the moment we hear great stars, we know the kind of hype we get. All Telugu people know what is happening with Prabhas. The moment we know Prabhas, the kind of hype got for Salar, gave 1700 crores. <laughs> kind of things. Right? The moment you hear the great heroes or big people name, the kind of hype, give, hype is really great for the story. Lou gives such a great hype for the story. And does he talk about Caesar Augustus? No. His story is not about Caesar Augustus. His story is not about Quirinius, okay? Or the other friend. So these two, he talked about these two big people. And slightly he's taking his attention away from them to a small little baby. What is he doing here? Two things. Number one, he is giving the historicity of his story. And number two, he is humiliating Caesar. Starting with Caesar, but the story is not about the Caesar. That is the humiliation. You call a great person as chief guest for a program and don't talk about him and talk about other person, what would happen? The person will get offended. Right? That is what Luke is doing. Luke 2 starts with claiming, Luke 2 starts with teaching that, uh, that Caesar Augustus is the emperor and the most powerful man in the world. And Luke, he wrote two books. First book is Luke, second book is Acts. You know how Luke ends his Acts? Acts chapter 28, Apostle Paul, in the last two verses, he will be proclaiming, standing in Rome, saying, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Who is the Lord? Caesar was the Lord. But Caesar is still living. Apostle Paul comes and here he proclaims, Jesus is the Lord. So Luke, he knows his story very well from beginning till the end. He knows what is he going to communicate. He started the story saying Caesar Augustus is the emperor and the lord and lord of this world. And he, and he took a, a deviation from him and took another turn and started bringing this small boy who is the king of the world. And after proclaiming him, he goes and proclaims Jesus as the lord. At the end of the book. That is what Luke is trying to preach. Caesar is not the king. I don't know who all leading and ruling in our world. My brother, in this moment, I would like to tell you, this is the Christmas message. Jesus is the king of the world. I don't know who is the president of America, who, who is going to be the president of America, who is going to come to power in India next year. I really don't know. Whoever it comes. <coughs> The message of Christmas is, Jesus is the king. And having said that, let's go to another part. Uh, Luke says, and the angels, they have given a sign. Angels have given a sign to the shepherd. You know the story, that's why I'm not going reading that. Angels, they sit 
to shepherds and this will be the sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths lying laying in a manger this baby king who was born who, who he will be wrapped in swaddling clothes and he will be lying in a manger and this is the sign this is the sign angel gave to the shepherds what is the sign you can give for the king army you know the majesty glory these that and everything but these are not the signs the angel was giving this angel was giving a sign saying the baby will be wrapped in swaddling clothes who is the most free person in the world caesar caesar is the person who could go anywhere and everywhere he could do anything and everything he can no if he goes yeah, nobody can say no permission sir no, you know entry is only for these people no one can say that caesar is the person who can go freely everywhere and here the angel says about this person the who the king who came and who is who was wrapped in swaddling cloth who was not even able to move his arms and legs the baby will be straight would not be able to move in the swaddling clothes right and how can he be the king and the same luke gives the answer when the baby tore the grave clothes the king the baby jesus he is not remaining as a baby he is going to one day tear, tear all the wrapping clothes of dead body and he proclaimed himself to be the lord apostle paul writes in romans chapter 1 verse 1 onwards jesus declared to be the son of god and son of david by the resurrection okay jesus he came as a small boy and he is still king what is happening here jesus caesar was the most secure person but here comes why why jesus caesar has the greatest security because he is scared of his own life people may kill him that is why he was so scared and here comes the king of the world not scared at all and who who has given himself to be vulnerable who had given himself to be vulnerable what is the condition of a baby can a baby feed itself no he, the baby has to depend on someone can they, baby protect itself herself or yeah baby himself please forgive my grammar <laughs> no baby is so vulnerable he has given himself into a vulnerability of humans into our human hands he is not scared he is the king king should have security caesar had security but this baby is not scared at all because he himself vulnerably he has given because he knows even if you if you kill the baby in the swaddling clothes what would happen he is going to tear the grave clothes <laughs> and which he proved on the day of resurrection through which he proved himself to be the lord see is on the day of resurrection he folded the wrapping uh, sorry wrapping clothes and broke the seal of caesar you know what when jesus died and buried there was a seal put on the grave what happened in the morning when mary went the seal was broken and the stone was rolled away what is that the same baby who broke the seal of caesar if the caesar seal is there nobody can touch it and he broke it that is how he proved himself to be the lord of this world i really do not know what these old lords are going to do the kind of graves they are going to build in this world either it can be gaza or it can be ukraine or it can be anywhere the christmas message is this the king has come into the swaddling clothes he tears down all these grave clothes of everybody and he promised the resurrection and he is the king that is the message of the christmas another sign given to us by uh, by the angels this baby was wrapped in swaddling clothes and was lying in laying in a manger and if you read the bible there will be a small footnote go to the footnote you will find it will be written feeding manger it is not any manger it is a feeding manger a place where animals can come and eat who is the person in the world can eat anything and everything caesar 
Caesar is the person could eat anything and everything. He has everything to eat. Great, lavish, uh, you know, buffets he can have every day. Because he is the Lord and Emperor. But this baby, he came into a feeding manger. He did not come to eat. What happened in the other, on the other hand was, he gave himself to be eaten. He gave himself as a food, substantial food for entire humanity. That is a symbol which was explained to us through this manger. Manger is a place where the animals go and eat. And the Caesars and the kings of this world, they are supposed to feed people. They are supposed to feed people, but they never did it. You know, people are suffering for food. There is no food, enough food in the world. The other day I have seen some videos uh, how people are looting the humanitarian aid that is coming. Just for a bottle of water, you know, they are running after a truck. Just bottle of water. That is the situation. The Caesars of this world never fed the people who were supposed to feed. And what they did, they fed themselves. And this king who came in the manger, he gave himself to be the food of the entire humanity. On the day and the night he was arrested, the next morning he was crucified. The night before he was, arrested, he was crucified, he gave himself and said, take this. This is my body broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. And he gave the wine and said, this is the blood. I gave it to you. For the new, it establishes the new covenant. Please drink it. He gave himself to be eaten. And he is the substantial food that we eat. We all know we did meditated on the Lord's prayer in the previous weeks. What is the meaning of praying? God give us this day our daily bread. The real meaning of the word daily bread means today uh, apple bread, tomorrow fruit bread, the other day pow, the next day jawari roti. Not that. What, what Jesus was teaching us is to pray, Lord give us our substantial bread. Once we eat it, you will never be hungry anymore. Once you eat it, you will not die anymore. Such a food that is nothing but the communion, the body and blood of Jesus Christ through in which we all are participating. This Caesar, this king, he did not come to eat the food of the people and starve his people, but he came to give himself as a food to others. He is the substantial food. And you know the place where he was born? Bethlehem. The meaning of the word Bethlehem is house of bread. And house of bread came the substantial bread. From Karachi bakery comes good plum cake. From Bethlehem comes the substantial bread. <laughs> so the true substantial bread for the entire humanity has come from Bethlehem because the baby Jesus, the king of this world, has come and was lying in the manger. Not manger, feeding manger. He came to give himself as food to others. Even for the people who are in this situation, I really have no confidence on any of these presidents of this world who could feed them. But I have full confidence on Jesus completely. He alone could feed the people with food and with substantial food. Every grain that comes into this world, it is by the hand of Jesus and the hand of the Lord. He is the one who is feeding and sustaining the entire world. And that king has come as a baby. So somewhere we think, oh, this baby, oh, so cute. We'll pray and we worship and uh, it's so beautiful. That is not the Christmas message. The Christmas message today is even to the hunger, uh, people who are in poverty and hunger, Jesus is the substantial food. He came to offer himself to, to be the food. And the next thing we can see is... Um, and suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And if you read the book of Luke and especially this proclamation, it will be so wonderful. And it is written, the angels came and proclaimed. Right? The angels came and proclaimed. 
and it is written suddenly there was with the angel who is this angel the angel who came to proclaim and who is there with the angel multitude of heavenly host look at the word heavenly host the actual the word means it doesn't mean a bunch of angels it means the armies of heaven the armies of heaven and came they started praising jesus and worshiping the lord if caesar is the one in the world who has the greatest army of those days here comes luke proclaims the good news and here what happened caesar's army is humans and jesus army is angels what did caesar's army did caesar's army did only this whoever the army in the world i heard like there are around 17 wars taking place in the world now whoever the army it may, it may be the army is bringing only this war this thing destruction and here comes the king of the universe who got not just angels he got his army of angels who is powerful now caesar is caesar powerful why imagine if caesar, you are the caesar and you heard and there was a baby born and angels proclaimed he is the king of the world and he has multitudes and thousands and thousands of angels came and singing what would happen caesar dress would get wet he might have, he will get sweat right he who is the powerful king here jesus i really don't know the kings of this world and um, they only brought violence showing their great army you know the nations who are very proud because of their army right and here comes the king who has the greatest army no human can ever have the army is of the angels and did he execute any violence no on the other hand he received all the violence all the violence of this world <coughs> he took it upon himself and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do having all the great army he never executed violence even people next to him who were following him for 3 and of years tempted him and tested him saying you know you are the son of god why don't you you know why don't you call the angels to kill them no john and uh, uh, james sons of thunder they they themselves said after casting out demons and all they said jesus shall we call for fire and brimstone from heaven to destroy these villages you remember this words yes these people who went and casted out just few bunch of demons that's all and they are saying they are calling for fire from heaven to destroy villages and here comes the the king of the world peter comes and says why uh, he was going to attack the army who came to arrest jesus what did jesus say he who is living with army will die with, sorry will living with sword will die with the sword did he retaliate no he absorbed all the violence of the humanity he has the greatest army he says if i call my father he can send legions of angels but i don't want to call because i did not come to add more and more violence violence against violence cannot solve the problem it adds it it increases more and more violence so this king he did not he did not uh, uh, come to execute violence but he came to uh, what we call it um, uh, uh, he came to uh, uh, nullify we need to call he or he came to destroy or remove or stop the violence altogether he has the greatest army who is powerful here could caesar any time stop the war no jesus alone could stop the wars in many places and last time also we studied about the second coming of jesus and in which we read even if you think about eschatology the coming of the lord and all jesus is going to establish his kingdom by fire and brimstone no we have mistaken he is going to establish with his word that proceeds from his mouth so this kingdom his kingdom is not of violence his kingdom is of love and absorbing the violence and canceling it that's what i was trying to forget <laughs> remember i forgot jesus came to cancel the violence that is a kind of king 
who was born 2000 years ago and angels proclaimed having said that let us go to another part the caesar established a great kingdom you know entire rome has his uh, uh, you know buildings for his legacy but all these buildings and whatever caesar built great uh, sorry all roads leads to rome we say rome is the greatest city we talk about whatever we say rome is known for its glory whatever the great empire rome built what happened everything is in ruin now there is there are no buildings that are working now all those things were broken and fallen down you don't find any old building that is standing even today everything that caesar built all the empire that caesar built was collapsed but here comes the king who built a kingdom in the last 2000 years jesus built the church he said i build my church the gates of hades cannot prevail against it since 2000 years ago since 2000 years church is existing in this world church started with 12 people in the first century then to 120 people how many persecution church underwent rome tried to destroy them completely israel tried to destroy them completely nations tried to destroy them completely in all these 2000 years church still remained not just remained it flourished and it thrived in the 2000 years and the roman empire which caesar built could not stand everything that rome built everything that caesar built was broken the kingdom jesus came to build it remained till now and it is going to remain forever and the rome according to luke caesar augustus was the powerful person according to luke chapter 2 verse 1 and whose kingdom is standing on top of caesar augustus kingdom we can see the crosses today on everything that caesar built in rome we can find crosses right every on every institution you can find cross there is nothing in rome where there is no cross there is nothing in europe where there is no cross everywhere everything that caesar built on which this small little baby who was born 2000 years ago who came and who got victory not with fire not with swords not with his army but absorbing the violence and with love he built his kingdom and on whom even on caesar's kingdom itself he established his flag the cross even today it is remaining this is the message of christmas that's what angels were proclaiming caesar augustus was there but the true king was born in a manger that's what angels were proclaiming his kingdom is built by his love and by his sacrifice and one last thing i would like to share and close now the verse say verse 8 it says now they were in the same country shepherds living out in the field the angels came and proclaimed this good news to shepherds caesar he has great people around him if he has any good news he can share to aristocrats he can share to rich and he can share with with highly educated people all these great people the world chooses the best in this world to have to have to be their company right the world always wants the best but god always chooses the worst least last lost and little you know the parables least last lost and little all these only he takes and makes them at the end great right so god chooses the least last lost and little to bring the best out of them world chooses the best to bring good out of them jesus chooses the worst to bring best out of them and that's what jesus paul said in corinthians you were not so wise god did not choose the wise people in this world but he chose the foolish people to put the wise into blame so this man he is not going to any aristocrats the angels are not going to kings and rich people educated people who have great social status they are going to a very least community of people who are not even counted these people you won't even find them in the village they will be always in the jungle tending their sheep okay nobody would know them if you go and ask them where is allah they cannot find him because he is in the jungle t- tending his sheep 
So that guy is such a pe people who do not even have identity to them, the angels went and proclaimed the good news. And this is a message. Who are the for people who do not have a great identity? Who are the people who suffer the worst in uh, civil war, you, you say, in national wars, you say, in any kind of changes that government brings? Poor people. Rich people become more and more rich. <laughs> Poor people will pay their tax and make the rich people rich. Okay? So, uh, these are the people who are suffered to them. The angel is coming and sharing the message. Sometimes these Roman soldiers must be going uh, for patrolling in the villages. They find a shepherd and take uh, one or two of their sheep for barbecue that night. That is a regular practice in Israel in the first century. So that's such a vulnerable lives they have. And to them the angel came and proclaimed the good news. The angel came today and proclaiming the good news to the people who got stuck in war. It can be Ukraine, it can be uh, Africa, it can be in Palestine, anywhere. It can be any side. I'm not taking any side. <coughs> Bo in war, both sides will get hurt. Not one side. So to all of them, the angel is coming and proclaiming the good news. The world you are seeing around, the Caesars you are seeing around, they are not the kings anymore. Because for unto us a child is born, somebody who is a king born into this world. That is a good news. The angels were sharing. So, in conclusion, what is the Christmas message I would like to bring to you today? What is the Christmas message I would like to bring, especially to people got stuck in war? Is this, in spite of all that is happening around, especially for those who got stuck in war, suppression and oppression and in poverty where they could not even afford a piece of bread for them, the good news of Christmas is this. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good new, good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, Savior, who is Christ the King, who is Christ the Emperor, who is Christ the Lord. The Lord means Emperor. Okay, Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger, and he will not remain the same. We should not forget, angels should have said that. <laughs> so this is the good news. The angels proclaim to everyone. For unto us a Savior is born, a King is born. And he was wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. So... Let us join with the angels and multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill to all men. Even to people got stuck in war. For everyone. Peace. That is the Christmas message. May God bless you.